He called us not to see. He's everything. He ushered us into his marvelous life. He's everything. He equipped us to serve him. Doc, he's everything. He orders our steps. He regulates our minds. He keeps us away from the wicked. He's everything. He heals our bodies. He mends our brokenness. He's everything. And because he's everything, he's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our adoration. He's everything. He's worthy of our obedience. Because he's everything. And because he's everything, that simply means that he's good. He's sweeter than the honey or the honeycomb. The psalmist said, all taste and see that he is good. Everything on his resume is good. His commands are good. His direction is good. His precepts are good. Because he's everything. The Bible says he's the most high God. And we are to meditate on him day and night. Why? Because he's everything. Somebody in here was lost. And they didn't, didn't think that they were going to be found. But he's everything. Somebody was sick. And the doctor said you won't go be quick. He's a redeemer. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. Tell somebody he's my everything. But the Holy 
Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. <clears throat> Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you do not understand these things. I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned. But the Son of Man has come down from heaven. As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must, must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For, it is, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. Verse number three from Ephesus. I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, that preaches all by itself. Because we understand before we have the new birth, we are spiritually dead. And when something is spiritually dead, there is no life in it at all. That lets us know when we are spiritually dead, we can't be resuscitated. But when we experience the new birth, when we experience Jesus Christ, and start to have faith in him, we are born again. So we must be born again. For a few moments, mm, on this morning, I want to talk to you from the subject. The old way will open a new door. The way we used to do stuff, and we failed at doing it back then, won't produce different results today. So the old way <clears throat> won't open a new door. The doors we opened 50 years ago possibly won't open today. Minister Trey, because the old way, come on, won't open a new door. See, many times, thinking it's such that we are caught in unfavorable circumstances. And these unfavorable circumstances can be due to our lack of dedication. The old way, won't open. New doors. We'll often find the circumstances that are tough to deal with because we're not consistent. Doing it the old way won't open a new door. See, I'm dropping these words on you intentionally, being dedicated to being consistent because this is what we must improve on. Sometimes we are caught in unfavorable circumstances due to our lack of commitment. Because we're not spending time with the Lord like we should. We pretend that we are on Sunday. But when we leave here, Deacon is glad we leave Jesus here to do what we want to do. The old ways 
Hold on, man. New doors. Sometimes we find ourselves in circumstances that are hard to deal with because we are not practicing godly principles in our lives. And maybe it can be because we don't know them. But the old man, hold on, a new door. Sometimes we find ourselves in a crunch because we're trying to do ministry using the world's tactics. Take a baby, it ain't gonna work. The old way. Hold on, a new door. We know that gospel don't work. We know it brings division. We know that backbiting doesn't work. We know that talking about our brothers and our sisters don't work. We know that not loving one another don't work. Take your neighbors in the old way. And go open. A new door. In our text, we have to this. Who was a Pharisee and a ruler of the Jews? They could have said he's come to Jesus in the dark. In the darkness of night and in the darkness of mind. Many times we approach Jesus in the darkness of night and with the darkness of mind. But Jesus tells you there must be a change. My brothers and my sisters, there must be a change. There must be a change in how we approach God. It begins with us reverencing Him and respecting Him for who He is before we try to do the work. Amen. Too many times we put the cart before the horse. We want to engage in the ministry without relationship. But there must be a change. We cannot continue to do church the way we've been doing church. We can't continue to sit at home when we should be being the church. We cannot continue to do the same old things, Sister Sharon, and expect a different result. The world called that insanity. So we have to turn from our selfish ways. We have to turn from our sinful ways, which we should be confessing daily. And we must turn to God and truly have a desire to build up the kingdom. Oh, yes. Let me ask you a question before I go any further. Do you have a desire to build up the kingdom? See, let me, let me throw this in here and The kingdom of God and hope are two different things. So are you trying to build up hope? Are you trying to build up the kingdom? Amen. Amen. There must be a change. There must be an emulation of Christ. And if you want to emulate Christ, we got to know who He is. Amen. And in order for us to know who He is, we got to spend more time with Him. If you truly love somebody, you desire to spend some time with them. So if we truly love God, we want to spend time with Him. And I'm just not talking about just sitting in His presence doing nothing and twiddling your thumbs. We got to be proactive. 
in our discipleship. Proactive in kingdom building. Proactive in our Christian education. Proactive in our evangelism so we can build up the kingdom of God. It don't matter if they join home or not. It should be our desire if we are born again that they be saved. Do I got a church up in here? I can hear it. We have the desire to walk in a growing and right relationship with Him. Yes, yes. Let me throw this in parenthetically. Right relationship is on His terms. Y'all been in church all week, so I'm tired Right relationship, Dickie the Simpson, is on his terms. Not our terms, what we think we know, what we assume we know, or what somebody else told us. The old man. Well, no man. A new door. And unless we are born again, we cannot see or comprehend the kingdom of God nor the things of God. In order for regeneration, that means being saved, saved, to occur, one must be spiritually reborn. And that comes through faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But as Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, basically what he was saying is the old way. Ain't gonna open a new door for you tonight. Today, it's imperative that we all, and let me make this clear, from the pulpit to the back door, examine ourselves. We got to keep it real. You know, and I know. I just talk about me. I know what I fall short. And when I come before the Lord, I can only keep it real with Him. Young people, He sees everything that you do. He knows everything that you think. So if you don't know, now you know. You can't fool God. What did they, what they say at Christmas? Santa sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you were awake and know when you were sleeping. He knows you were bad or good. See, God sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad and when you've been good. So we do. Forget to say. Mr. Trinkman, she called it. Micah, he's told you what is good to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. That's basically live right, love right, and walk right. If we are born again, we're going to be striving to live right, love right, and to walk right. There must be a change. And we know that restoration and fulfillment comes by faith. Let me tell you something about faith. Faith is not a feeling. Let me take a step back. Being saved, somebody say, somebody may say today, no, Reverend Slade, I don't feel saved. I come out here to let you know that saved ain't a feeling. Saint is a relationship. We must be striving to grow our relationship. We must be striving to grow our faith. We got to want this thing. All the stuff that's going on in our society, they overturning Roe versus Wade. Mass shootings. We, we were getting pulled over just for being black. It's imperative that we walk by faith. Yes. 
and not by sight. Because what you see might fool you. Right. So you got gold. And then you got fool's gold. The difference between the gold and the fool's gold is that the gold is genuine, but the price is more. There's a price that you're going to have to pay for a greater anointing. There's a price you're going to have to pay for going higher in God. You have to decide what level you want to be at. It is time for the church of Jesus Christ to talk about that this week. It's time for us to get out of the shallow waters. And to launch out into the deep. Why? Because in the shallow water, this one's a little fish out. But when we launch out into the deep, that means we have to be quick to launch out into the deep. That's where the big fish are. We should be going after the big fish. And we need to stop preaching to each other. And entertaining each other. The Bible says to go be there for Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe. But it did not say to stay in the edifice. It's okay to be here to get your marching orders. But we come here to get our marching orders and go to serve. The benediction. It's not the end. It's like this is the beginning. Is this how it's that? The benediction is not the end of worship. It's just another beginning. Because worship is always in the process of beginning. And it should never, ever end. Being born again is spiritual. Rebirth, which cleanses our sin and brings a spiritual transformation. Jesus stated, in order to see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. You must be transformed. You must be regenerated. And you must be born anew. We must realize that false faith is built on the false principles. And it is not faith at all. Faith is defined as belief, trust, and loyalty to God. Let's just focus on that last one. Loyalty to God. When I'm about to do something, am I being loyal to God? When I'm thinking my thoughts, am I being loyal to God? When I'm about to speak, am I being loyal to God? As I'm about to engage in ministry, is it about God or is it about me? We must be loyal to God. So when we come out of darkness and we are born again, we accept God for being true. And he is the only thing that really is true. We have confidence in him. And we are loyal to him. And Hebrews chapter 11 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So by faith, we understand who God is. By faith, we understand that God is. By faith, we comprehend and we know what God can do. By faith, we perceive directly what we can become when we are in Him. By faith, we recognize the Lord as Savior, the Most High, and that He is power. See, when we walk by faith, darkness cannot overtake us. Why? Because we got Jesus. Jesus said, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, 
I am the light of the world. And light and darkness can't occupy the same space. So when we are walking with Jesus, we understand that darkness cannot overtake us because we got Jesus. Trials can't take us out because we have Jesus. Brokenness can't slow us down because we have Jesus. Naysayers and backstabbers can't keep us from getting the job done because we got Jesus. And as long as Jesus is in the equation, everything is going to be all right. So I have a church up in here. But understand, walking by faith requires direction, dependency, and dedication. Direction with God and know where you're going. And we have to depend on God. And we must cast our cares on him. Let me park there. Many times, we cast our cares on him and then pick them back up. But when we pick them up, thinking Westbrook, we make them worse. So the mindset should be to give them to Jesus and leave them there. If you pick it back up, take the name and say, put it back down. We depend on God. And then there's dedication. We should never stop. Christ I live. And for Christ, I will die. And I want you to understand that we must keep depending on God. There are going to be problems when you leave this earth. But keep depending on God. Sometimes you're not going to feel your best. Keep depending on God. Your health may fail you. But keep depending on God. Friends may forsake you. But keep depending on God. You may get discouraged. But keep depending on God. You may think that you're lost. But keep depending on God. Temptation will come down your street. But keep depending on God. You may feel abandoned. You may feel all alone. You may feel forsaken. But God is always with you. He promised never to leave you. Nor forsake you. No, never alone. He promised never to leave you. Never to leave you alone. So how do we overcome the darkness of mind in the midst of the darkness of this world? Number one, you must first recognize that you're in darkness. Because believe it or not, there's some folks who think they're in the light. <laughs> And they're not. There's the folks that think they're in the light and they're in darkness and they come to church every Sunday. Because understand this. Everybody that comes to church ain't saved. There's some secrets in the crowd. There's some people that just want to observe in the crowd. There's some saved folks 
in the crowd. There's some workers in the crowd. And I guarantee you, look hard enough, Satan is in the crowd. Amen. And you know, when we deal with one another, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual thing. We must make sure that our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So, it behooves us to be connected, to be committed, to be resilient, to be determined to live this thing out to the end. But we must recognize when we are in darkness. Number two, Christ must be our commitment. And it was clean change. I'm going to say it one more time. For Christ I live, for Christ I die. We must be connected, committed, and ready to serve at a moment's notice. If you sleep, you better be ready to serve. If you, I'm tired right now, but I'm ready to serve. We must be willing and ready at all times because there's somebody out there depending on you to be in position. So Christ must be our commitment. I like that thing this man. Okay, we gotta be prepared. Mm -hmm. That's from you. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta be prepared. Mm -hmm. We have to be prepared to serve. Yeah. Amen. So it behooves us. I know it takes some time to do what we need to do. To make sure that we are in the presence of Almighty God so we can hear clearly the direction He wants us to go. We have to stop skipping over God. And we must go to Him first. But, Elder Kim, before we go to Him, we need to prepare ourselves to enter His presence. Yes, yes, yes. Number one, I told y'all it wouldn't be long, but I think that long in But thank you, Holy Ghost. You must recognize that you're in darkness. Christ must be our commitment. You got to be connected. He says, I am the Bible. And you are the branches. When you're disconnected from me, you can do nothing. Christ must be our commitment. If we want to be successful, it mentioned Christ must be our commitment. If we want power as we serve, Christ must be our commitment. If we want the Holy Spirit to illuminate our minds, there must be a commitment. And not just a commitment on Sunday from 11 to 12 30. Uh -oh. So we must recognize that we are darkness. Christ must be our commitment. And last but not least, we simply have to trust in the God who transformed us. The Bible simply says to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And in all thy ways, Acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. This simply lets me know that the 
that the church must be determined to walk with God. Life, it ain't always going to be easy, but we must be determined to walk with God. Struggles are going to try to overtake you, but we must be determined to walk with God. Disappointment, my brothers and my sisters, is a part of life, but we must be determined to walk with God. Opposition is going to come down your street, but be determined to walk with God. Folks are going to stab you in the back, but be determined to walk with God. Everybody ain't going to like you. Everybody ain't going to support you. But you got to be determined to walk with God. Don't let discouragement slow you down. Try to avoid the distractions. Don't allow the crowd to hinder your progress. Don't allow the crowd to bring you down. Don't let sickness mess with your mind. Be determined to walk with God. And if you are determined, to walk with God, you have to try Him for yourself. If you want to open new doors, you got to try Him for yourself. If you want to break the chains in your life, you got to try Him for yourself. If you want to change those bad habits, you got to try Jesus for yourself. If you want old things to pass away, you got to try Jesus for yourself. If you want to heal it for your soul, try Jesus. If you want joy, unspeakable joy, try Jesus. If you want peace, if you want love, try Jesus. A song that said, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Right now. He can save your soul. Everything else will be secondary. That means that God can do whatever he said he can do. So if God can do all, simply let him in. He satisfies. Let him in. He purifies. Let him in. He delivers. Let him in. He set you free. Let him in. He sanctifies. Let him in. He beautifies. Let him in. He illuminates. Let him in. He restores. He revives. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. New mercies. I see. All in the hand. The hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto thee. I don't know who needs to hear this, but we serve a God that is great. In the good times, he's great. In the bad times, he's great. In your going out, he's great. In your coming in, he's great. In your virtual, he's great. In your actual, he's great. A songwriter said, there's nobody great. A songwriter said, there's nobody great. I'm going to say it one more time. There's nobody greater. There's nobody greater than our God. So now, do we overcome the darkness of mind in the midst of the darkness of this world. Number one, recognize that we are in darkness. Number two, Christ must be our commitment. Last but not least, trust the God who transformed you. Because there's nobody greater, there's nobody greater than our God. And I simply want you to understand the old way. Will open a new 
nous de haut. God bless you.